Andy, you got to hand it to me, though. That certainly is a good-looking picture of Ruby Till, ain't it? Don't get me no more regretted there than I is. Uh, you ain't mad because I brought the picture home, though, is you? Well, I was sitting here working on the books, trying to figure out everything, keep the figure straight. Then you comes in, and I find you've been over to Ruby Taylor's house while I was sitting here working. Well, I tell you, I just happened to run into Ruby Taylor on the street, and we talked about a minute, and then she said that she had stuff over her house for me. So I walked over there with her, and she gave me this here picture. Is you falling in love with her? No, I ain't falling in love with her. I like her, though. I think she's plenty sweet. You was the one that told me last week after you heard about Mamie getting married that you'd never be the same and you'd never forget it. Now you come home with a picture of another gal. Well, what I told you was the truth. I never will forget Mamie. Never will get over it, neither. But that, 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 that ain't got nothing to do with me having a picture of Ruby Taylor. What are you going to do now? Sit that round here so that I got to see that thing every morning, noon, and night, huh? I'm going to sit it over here. You don't have to look at it unless you want to. I'm going to tack it up on the wall here. Well, how was business with the taxi cab today? I took in uh, $6.50. That ain't so bad, is it? That ain't so bad, no. But that ain't good. Give me the $6.50. What was the trouble? Ain't no trouble. I just done the best I could. The people wouldn't ride no faster, that's all. I got an idea, Amos, how we can make a lot of money. How we gonna do it? Now listen. Some of the other taxi cabs let five people ride as cheap as one. They do what? They let five people ride cheap as one. Mm -hmm. What we has got to do is beat them. How we gonna do it? Starting tomorrow morning, I want you to get a sign and put it on the taxi cab and say that uh, ten people can ride for the price of one. What do you mean? Ten people can ride for the price of one? Yeah, get ten people in there and just charge them as much as one would pay, you see. Mm -hmm. That's what the other taxi cab companies is doing. I found that out when I was talking to a fellow today. And we let ten ride for the price of one. How in the world is we going to get ten people in the fresh air taxi cab? You don't mean to tell me that our taxi cab don't hold ten people. We have hard enough time getting five people in there. Then the next best thing to do, then, is to make two trips, because I gotta start that thing. That's ten as cheap as one. What do you mean, take five people, then come back and take five more? Stop and think, Amos. About what? What I was talking about. I was thinking about it. Do you know what that'll mean? I know what it'll mean if ten people ever get in that taxi cab at one time. They're gonna break it down. Them tires are about to pop now with just me in there. Well, we've got to figure a way to get ten people in that thing, even if we have to let them stand on top of each other. Now, let's see. You can get three in the back seat, and you can squeeze two in the front seat with me. Three and two is five. But that's all you can get in there. Well, then, make two trips, just like I say. We'd be losing money the first thing you know. If the other taxi cab companies around here is letting five ride for the price of one, we can run them out of business. What good is that going to do, letting all them people ride for the price of one? Well, I'll tell you how you could work it. Go ahead, explain it to me. You could stop your automobile, you see, and get out. And as the people go walking by on the street, stop everyone that's passed, you see, till you get ten of them. Mm -hmm. Then stop them and say to them, uh... Folks, do you know that all ten of you people can ride in the taxi cab for the price of one? Then they'd all jump in your automobile. They'd all jump in there, huh? Yeah. Where would they go? Let them go wherever you take them. Suppose one wants to go one way, though, and somebody else wants to go another way. What are you going to do then? Uh -huh. That is right, ain't it? Let me figure here a minute. Wait a minute. You better talk to somebody that knows more about the taxi cab business before you start making any rules like that, don't you think so? Don't nobody know no more about the taxi cab business than I do. Look here what I was doing on the books now. I was running the business all right. Look here. What are you doing on the books now? I was getting the book value of the company. Now, there's something right there, book value. You hear me, don't you? What is the book value? Find out how much the book is worth? 
All big companies have got to know the book value of the company. How much is our book worth? According to the statistics here that I figures, the goodwill of the company is up in the thousands. Mm -hmm. We has both got goodwill. I'll give you a $5,000 will, and I'll make a $10,000 will for myself. Anybody knows a day is good. Oh, day is good, all right. Well, that's $15,000 right there. But that ain't the book value. Well, what is the book value? The book value of the company at the present time, less the federal income reserve, less the exemptification, plus the outgoing and the incoming, counting that $6.50 that you just brought in here and give me, we is worth $22.75. Is that all we is worth? Ah, that's right, Gusted. Here I is working on the books all day long to figure this up, then you ask me a question like that. Well, it ain't no use to get mad with me about it. Let me show you something about it here. You don't know what brain work I is doing. You must have done a mess of work to get all them figures. Just let me show you something here now. Go ahead, explain something to me. What did you got? Recording to the laws of the country, your books has got to be examined by a certified public accountant. What I have done done here, I have keeping the books in such a way that uh, they can't nobody read them but me. Well, what good is that going to do us? Suppose you would get sick. That ain't the thing, though. Suppose the government wants to send somebody over here and check over the book. Mm -hmm. When he gets here and looks at them, he won't know what they is. Maybe you was right. Now then, the next thing I got to figure up uh, on the books here is taxes. Taxes who? Taxes. Regular taxes. First thing you know here, we'll have to be paying out thousands and thousands of dollars taxes here. If I don't get everything straight, you see. Mm -hmm. Ain't but one thing on my mind right now. What's that? You know that uh, we have got $18 in the bank. And I'm worried about that uh, semi-annual. I've got to get that money compounded. That's what i got to do to that. You were telling me something about the dividends or something like that, sound something like that. What was that? Oh, yeah, that's another thing I was figuring up. Mm -hmm. I've got to give all the stockholders a quarter because everybody pays a quarter dividend. I was reading that in the paper. We ain't got no stockholders, though, is it? Me and you are stockholders. I is the biggest stockholder in the corporation. Well, why has it got to give the stockholders 25 cents then? Listen, Amos, what we has got to do is to have a lot of money ready because the stock is liable to go up in a minute, you can't tell. Them men's on Wall Street is watching us. Fools them big men's on Wall Street would take a notion to buy a lot of stock in our company. Fools they would get together in one of them swimming pools. What swimming pools? You don't mean to tell me you ain't heard of the swimming pools in Wall Street. Everything there is done in pools. I didn't know that. Ah, Rick Gusset. Ain't no use to try to explain nothing to you. Go ahead, look at that picture and get lovesick. You make me. 